Not a really long presentation. You're not going to be trapped here all afternoon. I promise. It's 10, 15 minutes maximum. But the man we're talking about is the famous Rob Roy McGregor. Now, there's not a whole lot of facts that we can tell you about him, but there's a great deal of story. And I'll do my best to try and fill in the, the gaps. But we know that Rob Roy McGregor was born into the McGregor clan in 1671. Now we can't pinpoint his birthday, but we can say that he was baptized in the church not far from Stirling at the beginning of March of that year. So he was probably born right at the very beginning of the year. Now he was born into Clan McGregor. Now Clan McGregor is one of the most famous clans in Scotland. They often got themselves in a great deal of trouble. So much so that two times in the history of Scotland, the name McGregor has been outlawed. Now, both times those, uh, those laws have been repealed, but many of the McGregor men simply took second surnames. Rob Roy McGregor himself was often known as Rob Roy McGregor Campbell. But he was born into Clan Campbell at pretty much the heyday of the clan. Now, his father himself was not Clan Chief, his cousin was Clan Chief. But his cousin preferred to focus his life on farming, so Rob Roy's father took charge. He was known as Colonel McGregor. He managed to raise the McGregor clan on behalf of Charles I, and they saw action in the English Civil War. But eventually he would get himself in trouble, and Rob Roy's father would be thrown into prison, first in Edinburgh Castle, and then down in the toll booth, or the prison, which would have stood in front of where St. Giles Cathedral stands today. Now his father spent two years in prison, becoming a very sick man, and during that time, his wife would pass away. Eventually, when he was released, he would return home, but after only a short time, he himself would also pass away, leaving Rob Roy in sole command. Now, Rob Roy is the leader of the clan. He had a few jobs. First of all, he traveled over to Argyle, where he worked as a factor. Now, a factor is an estate worker. He uh, eventually turned his attention to the most important trade in the McGregors, which was cattle droving. Now, cattle droving was basically taking cattle from the north of Scotland, driving it down to northern England and selling it at market for a profit. The McGregors were some of the best cattle drovers in Scotland. They were so good that most of the cattle that they drove south was not necessarily their cattle. It was what was called cattle reaving. This is when they would take legitimate cattle south and pick up a few extras as they went along. Now the McGregors were so good at it that Rob Roy McGregor himself became a very wealthy businessman. He had businesses in Edinburgh, Glasgow, and in the Highlands. Now the McGregors were so good at cattle droving that they invented a word that's still used in present language. That word is blackmail. Now the word mail is an old Scots word meaning payment. So it's the black payment. You basically pay Rob Roy and the McGregors not to steal your cattle. Pretty much they would steal it anyway. Now in the whole of Scotland, well in the south of Scotland, cattle stealing, well that was frowned upon. But in the north of Scotland, in the Highlands, it wasn't. It was basically our national sport. So much so that each village would bring all their cattle into the village of an evening, but they would place a few of the cattle on the outside. And this is the cattle that was legitimately allowed to be stolen. And it created a great deal of business. Rob Roy McGregor became a very, very important man. Now he became so important, he was able to make deals with some of the most powerful men in Scotland, including the Duke of Montrose. Now the new Duke of Montrose was a powerful Scottish noble, uh, member of Scottish nobility and a very powerful landowner. He owned a great deal of land just north of Glasgow around the Loch Lomond area. Now Rob Roy made a deal with him to borrow 1,000 Scots pounds with which he would buy cattle, fatten them up in the highlands and then drove them to Carlisle in the north of England and sell them for a profit. He would then pay the Duke of Montrose back his thousand pounds and the percentage of the profit. Rob Roy was enthusiastic about this and he sent his closest friend, a man called Alan MacDonald, to go collect the money. Now we know that Alan MacDonald collected the thousand pounds, but then after that we have no idea what happened to him. He simply disappeared off the face of the earth. Many people believe that he was possibly murdered and the money was stolen, and others believe that he simply got on board a ship and sailed to the New World with his pockets full of change. But what we can say for sure is Rob Roy was now in debt a thousand pounds. He tried to call in all of his own personal debt to pay it off, but he didn't even come close. He tried to make a deal with the Duke of Montrose, but the Duke of Montrose was having nothing of it. Now part of the agreement to borrow the money was if Rob Roy did not pay 
paying the money back, then his lands would be forfeit to the Duke. The lands around Loch Lomond were then claimed by the Duke, and Rob Roy was known as an outlaw. So he had an enemy and one of the most powerful men in Scotland. Now, as time will go on, he'll also make another enemy in the Duke of Athol, another member of Scottish nobility. Both men at separate times would capture the famous MacGregor. Both times, Rob Roy MacGregor would make his escape, a very difficult man to pin down. Rob Roy was also at times known as a Jacobite. Now, for those of you that don't know what a Jacobite is, a Jacobite is a supporter of the Royal House of Stuart. The Stuarts were chased off the throne in 1688, and from that point on, they would make several attempts to try and reclaim the throne that they believed was rightfully theirs. Now, the first Jacobite attempt was in 1689, and there would be a battle called the Battle of Killiecranky. Rob Roy would be present with his father, and he was probably around the age of 16, 17. Now, Killiecranky would be a victory for the Jacobites, but ultimately the first Jacobite rising would fizzle out. Now, in the height of his troubles, Rob Roy also took part in the 1715 Jacobite Rising. In this rising, there would be a great battle just outside Stirling at a place called Sheriff Muir. Now, two vast armies came to, uh, to engage in battle, and Rob Roy was present, kind of. He never really took part in the battle. Many say he simply sat off, watched the battle take place, intending to join the winning side. Now, that battle was indecisive, so Rob Roy and his men never really engaged in battle that day. But Rob Roy would still be branded a Jacobite rebel. He would take one more, uh, he would take part in one more Jacobite rising in 1619, and at the Battle of Glenshiel, he would be wounded. Eventually, his luck would run out, and Rob would be taken prisoner and sent south to London. Now, many Highlanders, especially Jacobites sent south to London, would never return. They'd either die in prison or they would be executed at the Tower of London. But Rob Roy MacGregor, by this point, was already a famous man. There was already a book written about his great deeds. So he was told to petition the king for forgiveness. He wrote a letter to the king, and the king listened to him, and he was released. He returned back to the north of Scotland, and what he hoped would be a quiet retirement. He set up home in a place called Balquidder, and he brought many of the MacGregor men with him. Now, the bordering land was owned by the McLaren clan. The McLarens were looking to expand their territory, so they raised their fighting force and they marched towards Rob Roy's land. Rob Roy made, raised his own men, known as the Gregorich, intended on facing them down. Now, when the two forces came face to face, Rob Roy decided that he didn't want to cause a battle. He would do anything he could to uh, prevent excess bloodshed. So he agreed to a duel, a battle of the champions, the McLaren champion against the famous Rob Roy McGregor. And this was a battle to the first blood. Whoever threw the first blood would be the victor. Now, by this point, Rob Roy McGregor was in his early 60s, and he was probably past his best. The champion of the McLarens was a 16-year-old boy, and in a short time he was able to outmaneuver Rob Roy and slash him across the hand. The McLarens were victorious, they had bested the famous Rob Roy McGregor, so they left the McGregor territory happy. Rob Roy returned back to his home uh, with an infected hand. He was quickly taken to his bed with sickness. Now after a short period of time, the chief of the McLarens decided that he wanted peace and he agreed to meet Rob Roy and discuss the terms of a peaceful future. Rob Roy said that he would meet the McLaren chief, but before he allowed the McLaren into his house, he insisted that he rise up out of his bed, place on his Highland clothing with his weapons at his side so he could face the McLaren man to man. After an evening of drinking and eating, peace terms were agreed upon and the McLaren chief left happy. Rob Roy turned to his piper and he asked him to play one more tune, which was I Shall Arise No More. He then laid in his bed and a few hours later would sadly pass away at the age of 63. Now when Rob Roy McGregor passed away, he was already a very, very famous man. Stories were being told about him, books were being written about his great deeds and his great victory. Now I can say that Rob Roy McGregor had the best PR agent in the business, and that was Rob Roy McGregor himself. Now of many of the stories that are told about him, we can't necessarily say whether they were true or not, but what we can say is Rob Roy McGregor was a hero of the Highlands and uh, one of the most important men in Highland culture from that time. Now ladies and gentlemen, that was about 63 years of Rob Roy McGregor's life condensed into a couple minutes.